Validation warfare is the struggle between both the male and the female gender to fulfill existential satisfaction at the expense of the other gender in a form of destructive competition because of psychological differences resulting through gender roles and the cultural perceptions of expectation. All right. I am Manslave, and I'm making this video on Christmas Day. It's just uh, almost 2 p.m. Uh, on uh it's about uh, well 1:39 or 1:49 p.m. on uh, December 25th, 2012. I'm making this video because of a um, right here big screen cast hour number two, <clears throat> and it's rejected because uh, well um, actually it was on for several days. Um, it was on uh, YouTube for three days, and then on December 23rd, I noticed that um, I um, I got this, and I got a um, um, a strike against my account because of um, because of supposed inappropriate content. Well, this is. Um, my community guidelines. I'm not in good standing right now. <clears throat> As for copyright strikes, I'm in, I'm in good standing. Or content ID claims, I'm in good standing. Uh, right here. Um, now, um, as far as I remember, I did not have any hate speech uh, against uh, a protected group. Um, you know, uh, of you know religion disability um i don't think i had anything against gender um you know not anything that has you know been an issue in the past uh, nothing about age or veteran or definitely not anything about veteran status uh definitely not anything um um about uh, ethnic origin or anything like that. The only thing uh, possibly about sexual orientation is uh, the uh, the nickname of this one dude. <clears throat> um, however, that was not even an intention of, um, well, it wasn't even used like it was uh, derogatory. It was just used like the nickname of what, you know, person is called or whatever. I don't think that was the issue. Um, I think something else was because I went back and watched my um, my uh, previous uh, video, the the video in question, which is Big Screencast Hour Two, and I'm trying to think: did I use some kind of racial slurs, or you know? Or, or advocate violence or anything like that and um, I couldn't find anything like that uh, there's a few things that that the only thing I okay the only things I could think of that differentiate from my other videos <clears throat> or anybody else's videos that might get me in trouble would be the amount of profanity uh, the amount of the F word used you know cussing and all that um, I slip out quite a few um, in this video, but there's quite a few in my other videos also. <clears throat> and they have not been flagged. Um, and then other people have cuss words in their videos, so I'm not sure that cussing is what got me flagged, unless it's the quantity, the amount. Uh, <clears throat> and then let's see. The main things in that video that would get me flagged, because I, I was really, really curious about what would get me flagged, and I put out the warning in prior, you know, in, in previous videos. It's like, hey, don't flag my stuff, and I won't flag yours. And I want to find out. I want to find out who flagged me and for what reason. I need to find out <clears throat> so that I don't, you know, offend anybody again. <clears throat> but I. I narrowed it down to about two other things. I'm not sure cussing or profanity was was the issue, although it could have been. It could have been something I don't even, you know, it could have been something that I'm not even aware of, something that I didn't even think somebody would pick up on. 
that's how these things work. Um, people generally think that they're, you know, that if they're offended by something, they're entitled to, you know, use uh, arbitrary, you know, force through this, through a system to um, get their way and to punish the person who, who offended them. I wish I could fit in with this group. You know, whether it's at my job or the grocery store or the gas station or any other place I'm at or online. <clears throat> you know, I mean, if somebody offends me, I wish I could just, like, point my finger and use a, a very, you know, frustrating tone of voice and just have the system crack down on them. But that's not, a, that's not available to me. Um, because, um, when I generally try to do that kind of stuff, or, you know, report, come on, the phone needs to stop ringing. <clears throat> so anyway, whenever I complain about, you know, people violating me, uh, getting on my nerves, offending me, or whatever... It's generally nothing's done about it. Um, I'm regarded as like a nagger, a whiner, and that might be because I'm I'm too quiet about that kind of stuff most of the time, and people are, I don't know, or they don't feel like doing anything about it. Uh, I remember me and the disposable human doing were in uh we were uh, in the grocery store one uh, <clears throat> one time and um, something didn't work, like. Like he had he had used um, a card um, at the uh, at the register, and it had just worked like an hour uh, previous to when we were in there, and then um, well the store said that the card didn't work and all that, and he's like, well it just worked like an hour ago, and um, you know, and he tried to get them to take the issue more seriously or whatever. And, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> well, the thing is, they didn't, they didn't just, um, they didn't just up and, and cater to his, his, uh, demands or whatever, and, uh, and, you know, uh, give in and say, oh, I'm sorry, oh, here, let, let's do something about that, uh, meh, meh, no, they, they just like, sorry, don't work, meh, meh, and then they just like, he had to walk off without, you know, the thing working properly, and so he, he blurted out for everybody to hear, he's like, you know, he's, he said, uh, the disposable human doing said, if I would have made a big effing fit, you know, if I would have, if I made, if I would have made a big fuss, um, over all this, then they, then they probably would have gave me my way and all that, <clears throat> like they do all the other customers, um, this goes into dominance and submission and all that, so anyway, you know, of course, uh, you know, um, me and the disposable human doing, we had both had our experience working in, in uh, in a fast food restaurant, different restaurants each, and, uh, so anyway, we, we've noticed this, Especially when when the disposable human doing worked at Wendy's, he, uh, I mean, it happens in this town where we live at, and it happens in other places, where if a customer throws a fit, they will get what they want. Matter of fact, there was a manager that was working at Wendy's, and we, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, we would we would you know say these things to express you know, the situation of what this manager would do. Basically, if a customer came in and complained about their food or whatever, then uh, the manager, and this is an exaggerated expression, but, you know, he would pretty much give them stock options uh, if, they gri if they griped about their food or if they threatened to call corporate or whatever, he would give them a 401k. Now, he didn't really give them stock options, and he, he didn't really give them a 401k, but the point is... is it expresses how much backward, you know, uh, businesses are willing to bend in order to accommodate problematic customers and all that. Uh, people that like to nag and tattle and all that. Uh, every time I went into Wendy's and ordered food, they, they've never gotten my order wrong. Uh, other people I know, you know, that I work with, they said they've never had any problem with Wendy's. 
But whenever I go in line there, <clears throat> you know, and whenever I go to eat there, I noticed it's either the person in front of me in line or the person who who um, uh, has already ordered and just got their food. They they seem to always have a problem. They seem to always complain, uh, you know, to the cashier and say that they didn't receive the proper amount of pickles on their burger. Or they said that, you know, something was wrong with their food. And these people are so picky. And the reason why I mention this is because that's why I think it's been going on with a bunch of the so-called hate speech and all that. Well, for all this hate speech legislation, it's really opening up a can of worms because, <clears throat> because it's so vulnerable to abuse. I mean, what's to stop anybody from pretending that they're offended by something and just out of, you know, petty hatefulness, you know, trying to get somebody's uh, video blocked or banned or flagged or whatever? I mean, it happens all the time in fast food, you know, like like a cook accidentally put, you know, mustard on a sandwich instead of mayo, and then a customer thinks, you know, they, they got this entitlement attitude that everything is supposed to revolve around them in every way, and that their their desires are to be fulfilled instantaneously, or else the the earth will somehow fall off of its axis and collide with the sun. <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's just it's just stupid. Um, and we see this all the time, and, um, I mean, you see it all the time in customer service and stuff, um, but, you know, it, it's, it's gonna open up a problem. I mean, really, like Dave Mustaine said in an interview one time, you know, people need to stop being gutless. They need to grow up. But, you know, um, anyway, that's another issue. What I think may have caused um, my video to be flagged, I narrowed it down to two major things. First of all is the Valerie Solanas spree shooting. <clears throat> um, All right, and I'm going to talk about that again. Valerie, and see, I'm going to see if this video gets banned because pretty much the only thing I talk about in this vi that, that could be offensive in this video, and this also functions as a test. Um, Valerie Solanas was a feminist. She, um, she was in the feminist movement. Uh, she's probably, for her time period, probably fairly prominent or, you know, effective in the feminist movement. She wrote the Scum Manifesto, which hates men. <clears throat> uh, Valerie Solanas was a radical feminist. Um, but she didn't call herself a radical feminist. She just called herself a feminist, as far as I remember. But she gets put in the rad femme category. Um, and... Oh, wow, look at what she uh, wants to do. Uh, she says that, that men have ruined the world and that women should overthrow society and eliminate the male gender. Now, that's some pretty bad hate. Now, that's, that's hate. I mean, to want to exterminate an entire demographic um, is a very powerful form of hate. I mean, isn't that what the Ku Klux Klan wanted to do to the African-American um, population, um, isn't that what Adolf Hitler wanted to do, wanted to do to the Jewish population? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to dispute that, 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 that wanting to exterminate a demographic, I agree that is hate and that should not be done. Uh, nobody should be killed just because of their ethnicity or gender or like whatever. Uh, <clears throat> But you know, I think I think we I think we all pretty much agree that that killing people is bad, okay? And, and using violence against people, using violence against people is wrong. I mean, I think we all agree on that. Um. Anyway, 
Um, mm, all right. Um, so, uh, you know, this is just some of, um, you know, Valerie Solanus and some of her writings. Very, very hateful against men. <clears throat> well, let's see. Um... All right, Valerie Solanus. Uh, she went on a spree shooting on, um, um, you know, back in 1968, and it's it's right here. And she shot Andy Warhol. Um, how many times did she shoot him? Um, and. Uh, Anyway, and she shot another guy, and she attempted to shoot another guy in the head, and um, and then the gun jammed, and then uh, therefore uh, no one died. Uh, they certainly would have if the gun had fired properly. Um, and um, but anyway, uh, yeah, Valerie Solana stalked Andy Warhol um, several times, and this and that, and, um, um, wow, Florence, uh, Kennedy called, uh, Valerie Solanus one of the most important spokeswomen of the feminist movement, okay, she was pretty powerful and influential, um, okay, so anyway, Um, so anyway, um, yeah, Valerie Solanus, uh, went on a shooting spree. Valerie Solanus, Valerie Solanus was a feminist, uh, a woman who was a feminist, and she went around shooting people, uh, and tried to kill another man, uh, by shooting him, uh, she attempted to shoot him point blank in the head with a pistol, but... The gun did not fire, it jammed or something like that, and then that's why she was not a killer, uh, but she attempted to do it. Um, and she was a very prominent person in the feminist movement. Now, <clears throat> um, I mentioned, you know, me and the disposable human doing, we mentioned that in um, this video right here, Big Screencast Hour 2. Matter of fact, it's in the earlier part of the video. The video is about an hour long, maybe 61 or 62 minutes long. Now, the only other major thing that could be regarded as offensive and get me flagged was when I, when me and the disposable human doing were talking about our our past relationships and and especially how I was, how I was talking about my former girlfriend, how me and her had met and how she treated me during the relationship and used intimidation against me, you know, claim that, that, you know, uh, men are, men are cheaters, she said, you know, she didn't say some men cheat, she didn't say, you know, uh, occasionally there's a man that may cheat or whatever, no, she just says men cheat, and she uses the generalization. Now, this video is going to function as a test, because I am using only those two topics in this video, other than flagging and fast food work experience. Um, <clears throat> so this video will function as a test, and it will see why I got flagged. Because if this video got flagged, it tells, you know, if this video that I'm making right now gets flagged, it's going to tell me why this video right here, the big screencast hour two, had gotten flagged. Um, so this almost functions as bait. <clears throat> Um, and, um, anyway, so me and the disposable human doing, we're talking about, uh, my former girlfriend and how she would intimidate me by saying that men cheat and that men shouldn't have the internet because it turns them into cheaters and men shouldn't have webcams because it allows them to cheat. And then, um, and then, uh, men should come straight home from work because, you know, so that they don't have an opportunity to cheat on their wife or girlfriend and all this other kind of stuff. And, you know, because men cheat and men cheat and because men cheat. And, uh, <clears throat> and then yet I, you know, found her on my living room floor, spoon position under the, uh, under the covers with uh, her ex-boyfriend, 
um, who she invited over here. She told me just because she wanted to, you know, talk to him. She hadn't, you know, talked to him in a while. She wanted to hang around with him, be, be friends and all that. I found out later, even from her, that it was a ploy to boil my blood and to get me jealous and to kick him out and to fight for her honor so, you know, she can feel like I I care about her or whatever. Mm. Because she used to tell me um, uh, many times over uh, during the, um, she used to tell me somewhat often during the relationship that that jealousy is a good thing because it means that the person cares. Well, ever since I was a child, especially since I was, you know, um, going through my teenage years, I was always taught that, that jealousy is wrong and that it, it is a negative um, personality characteristic that is problematic. Um, you know, I was... <clears throat> I always heard people talk about the the jealous boyfriend. It was on television, you know. Uh, my my relatives and and you know people in the community would talk about how bad it is for a man to be jealous and 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 all this other stuff <clears throat> in the relationship because it's an because jealousy. I was always taught was a inferiority um, characteristic. Um, you know, it means somebody has an inferior personality or whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, so my, my former girlfriend had always uh, intimidated me, um, you know, about cheating and that sort of thing, and I didn't even cheat on her. And then she arranges a, a, a stunt with her ex-boyfriend for me to catch them on the floor together, basically in what amounts to cheating, because come on, after all, you know, um, about a year ago in late 2011, you know, it was a big deal. It was it was, it was just blown out of proportion uh, in in the um, in the celebrity magazines about Robert Pattinson holding hands in the back seat of a vehicle, a vehicle that had several other people in it. Um, you know, Robert Pattinson was caught holding hands with a female friend of his uh, in the back seat of a vehicle. Um, that was filled with other people, um, and this was regarded as cheating. Uh, uh, Kristen Stewart made a, a a very big deal out of it, and she played the role of the victim and got her power from doing that, and claimed that you know Robert Pattinson violated her trust and all this horrible stuff. <sighs> then uh, you know. Um, Six months later, you know, less than a year later, uh, you know, Kristen Stewart uh, wrecks a home. You know, she um, uh, she uh, she cheats on Robert Pattinson with the director of the Snow White movie. Who was it, like Rupert Sands or whoever it was. And, uh, you know, all this public display of affection to a married man. Um <clears throat> And and then, uh, so she cheated on Robert Pattinson at least once, and I think there was a couple other incidents and all that. And it, it, it said in the media that it, it devastated him pretty bad. I mean, he, like, you know, like, locked himself in a room for a while and just, like, yeah, it, it, it hit him pretty hard. Probably also because of all the intimidation that Kristen Stewart had done to him whenever he was just simply holding hands with a female friend of his. Uh, but yet Kristen Stewart had an affair with a married man uh, and did some other cheating with other guys. <clears throat> and it devastated Robert Pattinson, um, not just because... Um, you know, the whole infidelity and then how he has to question himself and whether or not he kept her happy or was a good uh, protector, t uh, provider, or whatever. But also because the the just blatant um, fear factor. You know, it's like, you know, when he was holding... Uh, hands with that female friend of his, he was scolded and chastised very, very strongly for it. And so he probably, you know, was expected to get it in his head that, you know, uh, affection or whatever with, with somebody, 
uh, else while you're in a relationship with somebody is is wrong. You know, that's that's the lesson that I'm sure Kristen Stewart wanted to really put in his head and really um, emphasize that. And uh, so he's probably thinking, okay, public display of affection, you know, with somebody else you're not in a relationship with while you're in a relationship with somebody is wrong. And then Kristen Stewart one-ups him and goes even further with, with having an affair with a married man. And then he probably just felt, I don't know if he felt destroyed inside, but I assure you he felt bad. It's just like if you're in the workplace and you're told, um, um, be careful with company property, you know, don't like damaging anything or, you know, you should be careful and take safety seriously or protect the company's assets or, you know, or, or you shouldn't steal from the register. And then, you know, and then the person who told you not to do that, you know, let's say they're a manager or whatever. And then they, and then they violate the very things that they tell you to do, you know, that, that makes you feel horribly wrong. It feels like you wasted your efforts and you feel like, you know, you ex you expended yourself for the common good, you know, and then the person who, who, you know, told you to be moral and upstanding is violating the same things they taught you. And so anyway, <clears throat> I, uh, I need to send this, uh, I need to send a message. I just wanted you to see it. All right. Um... Okay, you reviewed the community. What the hell is these community guidelines? Like, don't cross the line. Okay, I didn't have sexually explicit content. Okay. Um, nope, didn't have any of this stuff. I didn't do any drug abuse or just like whatever. Um, nope, no violence. Um, Okay. Uh, no copyright inform. Uh, no copyright violations that I know of, because no copyrighted material was used in there. Um. Okay. Here's this thing once again. Um. Okay. Well, intimidation. Uh, we're gonna have to take down a lot of feminist videos. Um. Uh, let's see. Enforce these guidelines and all that. Um, hate speech. Now, no, come on, what's hate speech? For instance, racist or sexist comment uh, content may be considered hate speech. Well, then, then there's a lot of fucking hate speech in the media and in the movies and on television and in the news and all this other stuff. If this is a fucking crime against humanity, then, then we need to take action. We need to get a lot of stuff taken off television. We need to get a lot of stuff taken out of advertisements. You know, we need to, we need to get rid of all that stuff that says men are assholes, men are pigs, men are rapists, men are stalkers, men are this, men are that. Men are the cause of all crimes in, in society. Men are like a disease. Man, man. It still happens with impunity. Uh, no, they should have put here, just, just to make it more accurate, um, they, they, um, you know, um, like the, the members of a protected group, they honestly, like, what they just should have did is, on the topic of gender, you know, they just should have put women there, and, you know, a, a, a protect, a, a protected, uh, group, um, you know, uh, or, you know, j they just should have put women in there and just excluded men because that's pretty much what goes on. Um, all right. I understand that if YouTube upholds the, the warning strike, I will be unable to appeal to the future. Uh, all reason required. Um...
Oh. To the mention. Yeah. All right, here we go. Open up text editor. Here's what I'm saying to uh, YouTube. <clears throat> Uh, the reason for why um, I am appealing to the um, to the uh, to the YouTube uh, community guidelines, uh, or the you know the the um, the people that decide, you know, the committee or whatever that decide whether or not my video will be allowed on there. I said, you know, the reason why, you know, the reason required is because I need to know what was uh, offensive so that I learn not to do it again. The main portion of the video in question has been narrowed down to the mention of the Valerie Solanas, uh, uh, to the mention of Valerie Solanas as a spree shooter. And uh, hold on a minute. I mean, honestly, that's the main thing I can think of. Um, <clears throat> And that's really just, you know, me talking about that topic is really just, you know, um, a, a urge for there to be a universal standard and to, you know, fight for justice. Uh, because, you know, the majority of spree shootings uh, throughout the world uh, apparently have been caused by men or that the shooters were men, but... So, so it, it's being portrayed as a, a almost silently as a gender issue. Um, you know, it's becoming stereotypical. Me and the disposable human doing have been bullied about all this. I mean, in my workplace, there are th four colors of pants that are appropriate for, um, for, um, you know, the, the workplace dress code. And only two of those are actually used tan or well khaki and that sort of thing is almost like the de facto standard color of you know of of pants to be worn in the workplace for where i work at because i guess it kind of i guess it kind of um you know um is more in har harmony with you know the company's corporate colors and that sort of thing, like what they choose for their marketing or whatever. <clears throat> totally understandable. Uh, the other, uh, you know, secondary color that is used is black, because black is a, is more of a neutral color, I guess it's regarded. Other authorized colors are blue, because that is one of the main co uh, corporate logo colors, so it's, you know, very official, but nobody wears it, though. I mean, they're they're completely allowed to wear it, but just nobody chooses to. <clears throat> um, and then uh, I think green was one of the other uh, official colors that that is um, acceptable in the dress code. But most people wear tan, and you know uh, the second most popular color is black. And I personally like black because it blends. I mean, it goes good with anything. Black is a nice color. Um. And you notice my little bar here is uh, black colored. Uh, you know, when in doubt, black it out because it's just black is a nice color. Uh, you know, uh, I'm glad we're out of the days when, you know, uh, beige was, uh, you know, uh, a common color for computers. Now black is. Now also another color, which is the new beige, basically the new ugly color is silver uh, for electronics and all that. Um, my Blu-ray player is black colored. My television is black. My router is black. Um, well, my cordless phone is unfortunately silver. Um, and, uh, when I have a choice, I buy black colored items because the, you know, they, they just look good. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I wear black. Now I wear cargo pants, so I don't have keys and, you know, digging in my, 
digging in my thigh or leg, you know, my car keys and all that. Uh, and so I don't have to sit on my wallet because that's very uncomfortable. So I'll wear cargo pants and I put all that stuff in the side pockets. And actually, there's quite a few people around this community that wear cargo pants now. Um, one of my coworkers notoriously likes to wear them and all that. And I wear work boots in the workplace because, well, I pretty much have the most dangerous job. And what I mean by dangerous job is I'm around heavy equipment. I'm the person that carries out the furniture, that, that puts the televisions on the shelf. I'm the person that does most of the heavy, living, uh, heavy lifting there. I operate the pallet jack very often. Uh, these pallets weigh on up on upwards of a thousand pounds when they're loaded down with with merchandise or you know or equipment. Uh, and I wear these boots because they last longer than shoes. Uh, they're generally waterproof. Uh, they're slip resistant, so that's a safety reason there. Steel toe. I'm not really aware of any, you know, steel toe, uh, you know, sneakers or whatever. And I wear a steel toe in case I accidentally drop the pallet jack or a pallet on my foot. So that it's, I'm less likely to, to take a trip to the doctor, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, it's cheaper to buy, you know, to spend, uh, you know, 50 bucks on a pair of boots every year <clears throat> than it is to go to the doctor whenever I have an accident. Um... You know, and I wear steel toe because, well, whenever you're setting down furniture, like an entertainment center or a cabinet or whatever, it's convenient because you don't have to smash your fingers when you're setting the thing down. Uh, you just set the thing down on your steel toes, on your boots, and get your fingers out from underneath it and then grab onto the furniture somewhere else and gently set it down. Because, you know, this furniture, if it's, if it's light enough for two people to carry, you know... Um, then it's or even one person to carry, then it's light enough that it won't damage the steel toe in your boots. Well, we have shelving there, and one of my coworkers, uh, it was a shoelace or something, <clears throat> or her pants, caught on to one of the end caps uh, in the store, and she tripped and fell and messed up her arm. Well, I never wanted to be like that, so what I do is I, um, I tuck my, uh, my pants into my boots, Okay, well, people make fun of me and ask me, you know, like, what prison are you a guard at? They, they, you know, they'll call me prison guard or SWAT member or whatever, but I dress that way for safety. Um, I tuck my, my, um, my, uh, my pant legs, <clears throat> I tuck them into my boots so that they don't snag on shelves and trip me so I don't have to injure my arm. And I wear those boots the way I do because they protect my feet. You know, they, they lace all the way up. You know, they um, you know, they they give me ankle protection, so uh, so I'm less likely to to sprain my ankle or whatever. That's a that's less of a trip to the doctor. Um, and because you know, in order to get steel toe, I pretty much have to get work boots. Uh, these boots are slip resistant. They they have good tread on them. All these other features, and that's why I dress the way I do. Um, but, you know, it just so happens to be, you know, a similar way in which spree shooters dress. So, you know, I get that stereotype and all that, but I explain it to my coworkers, the reason why I dress the way I do in terms of my pants and footwear is because I pretty much have the most dangerous job, um, in the workplace there, you know, heavy equipment, um, this and that, um, you know, do the heavy lifting, so it's a safety reason. And after all, there's a sign in the back uh, production room that says accidents are avoidable, or or does it say preventable? But anyway, yeah, okay. So I'm going to send this to YouTube. I'm going to say the reason why I'm trying to make an appeal is because I need to know what was offensive so I learn not to do it again. Hopefully they understand that. <clears throat> the main portion of the video in question has been narrowed down to the mention of the Valerie Solan of Valerie Solanus as a spree shooter. And this gets back again to, you know, misandry, which is uh, gender-based hatred toward males. Uh, I'm not going to dispute that a majority of the spree shooters in the past have been men, 
But me and the disposable human doing, we wanted to bring up the fact that there have been female spree shooters also. Uh, we think that, you know, society's scrutiny should be put in perspective. Um, because if only male perpetrators are being focused on, well, that means that female perpetrators are not being focused on. That means that the female gender is not under the microscope of public scrutiny also, which means they feel like they're not being watched, and some of them could feel like they could get away with things. It creates hubris. Um, a certain blatant attitude of of in, invulnerability, you know, that, that they'll never get caught or that they'll, you know, always be able to do what they do. Now, me and the disposable human doing, we completely agree that violence is wrong and should not happen to anybody. <clears throat> I mean, to the point we're even against war. Um, you know, it just... You know, so anyway, uh, we don't believe in harming anybody. Uh, we have no criminal history. And we do not intend to commit crimes. Uh, we're not even interested in software piracy cr uh, crimes. That's why, if you notice here, I'm using, you know, the GNU Linux operating system and all the software is given by uh, given for free <clears throat> that I have. You just, you know, they just give it away. You know, that's that's one less crime that I'm interested in in committing. You know, it's like, you know, a lot of that proprietary software software is not even worth pirating. So anyway, uh, me and the disposable human doing, we desire to be law-abiding citizens. Okay, but you know, and we recognize that spree shootings are a tragedy. They are, um, they they are wrong. They should not happen. But we don't feel compelled to do all the emotional one-upmanship uh, that occurs, you know, in the media. You know, where you got to say senseless crime. You know, no good reason, tragedy, all this other stuff. I think everybody in society can look at the the uh, the event or the incident and immediately recognize that it is wrong, that it is bad, that it is a tragedy. You know, <clears throat> we we don't feel like it's necessary to capitalize on that and and to gain public trust or whatever by finding more words, you know, that to, to, to heap onto the pile of bad things to say about the assailant and and um, and positive things to say about the victims. I mean, most people automatically have their heart going out to the victim of a crime just in general. Um, I don't think there needs to be all this, you know, uh, emotional show. And and one-upmanship and all these speeches about you know how it was a senseless crime, it was a horrible tragedy. Mur, mur. Everybody automatically knows that it is that it is a horrible tragedy. Okay, Barbarossa made a really good video about this recently. <clears throat> I think it's his most recent video to date. And keep in mind, it's December twenty-fifth, two thousand twelve. Um. Yeah, um, about, well, masculinity is under fire now. It is uh, questioned. And see, that's the thing. That's, that's, a, that's the um, society bias uh, that goes on. And um, um, yeah, that's the society bias that goes on. Now, now I'm going to Barbarossa's um, uh, channel. Um it's this video right here. Stop, stop blaming mass murder on masculinity. And Barbarossa does really well. Um, now the response to becoming ambient was good. <clears throat> uh, right here in this video here, uh, this character in a TV show is told to just get over his rape. He was sexually assaulted, like, as the plot of the TV show and all that. And a woman tells him to just get over it. 
Um, and he's not giving the same type of sympathy as a woman of an equivalent crime would be given. Now, Barbarossa is pointing out the inequality, and that's, that's you know, that's exactly what, um, what, um, you know, me and the disposable human doing have a problem with is the inequality. Uh, we believe that men and women should be treated equally, but we see that they're not treated equally, and that's the problem. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, Barbarossa, a very good person on YouTube. I highly recommend him. So anyway, um, but um, there is a double standard, and it is wrong. Now, Stardust, he, he had a new, he had a video, and he, he mentions, he shows that clip of, you know, from ABC News, uh, ABC News report, where, um, you know, it, they have actors, and then they have a woman just abusing, violently abusing a man in public, sitting on a park bench, and, what was it, 163 people walk by without doing anything, and one of them was an off-duty police officer, and he says, and, and, and the police officer, you know, says, oh, what they have is just a little scuffle, you know. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not worried. Now, now, if he'd put his hands on her, oh, yeah, I'd definitely, yeah, I'd definitely have to do something about that. <clears throat> now, me and the disposable human doing, we found that, you know, months ago or whatever. And Stardust brought it up recently um, as uh, to, to just show the double standard. And I'm, I'm glad that, Bar that, that Stardust brought it up because it, you know, it does need to be, you know, explained to people in society. Now, I'm going to see if this video right here gets flagged, uh, because it should not be flagged. Like I mentioned several times in my video, I do not advocate violence against anybody. Okay? And I agree. Hate speech is wrong, even when men are the victims. Okay? <clears throat> It just, yeah, but, you know, I mean, society regards men as the only group that is acceptable to be victimized. Uh, now, what does it say about men? Does it say that men are superior? That only they are capable of enduring such things? I mean, these are the questions that I ask, because I was raised, you know, from from childhood onward to believe in equality of treatment between the genders. I was raised to understand that violence is wrong, that hate is wrong, that jealousy is wrong, that lying is wrong, all you know, that stealing is wrong, all these other things. Um but pff, like some of this stuff is apparently or apparently encouraged by society only to happen to certain other people. You know, <clears throat> um, you know, and, and you know, I remember watching a documentary um, about you know what it's like on cop college campus, and um, and then uh, anyway, um, you know, there was <clears throat> a bulletin put out on the college campus about an Asian woman being stalked, you know, possibly being stalked um, by the motorist of another vehicle um, just simply because she was Asian and all this, um, or because she was a woman and, you know, it was a big concern for the campus and all that. Um, meanwhile, another student, it may have been a female student, I forget, but it was one of the so-called liberals, uh, and this was back in like 2004 or whatever, it may have been 2003, anyway, um, one of these so-called liberal students of like, you know, the, politi the, the political ideology of liberalism uh, had said, um, it was either in a flyer or in a comment or whatever somewhere, said that next time you see um, basically a Middle Eastern person, and they use the racial slur or the ethnic slur for, um, or the derogatory expression for, you know, Middle Eastern man, 
and uh, you know, and then the the, the liberal student, uh, the liberal political student, said something to the effect of um, that um, that that you know the the derogatory term for Middle Eastern man uh, needs to be shot in the face. That's the, and I'm just quoting now. I'm just quoting what this person had said. Um, come on, let me find that. No, not that's not um hold on. Oh and this is where I saw the documentary at. It was by um um multimedia movie shows reports. <clears throat> now this wasn't this was not anything that Alex Jones had did. Um it was just uh, a, a documentary made by some other person uh, put on to um, um, put on to um, made into a documentary by you know uh, some guy about you know um, the speech on college campus and um, <clears throat> and. Alex Jones had basically distributed the documentary. Um, where is it? Oh, come on. I know there's more stuff. Oh, man. Come on. Now I'm instantly. Uh, it's something like Universe, like Speech 101 or whatever. Like. Does it survive? No, like, is it like education? Hold on. Come on. Oh, come on. Like, I'm not even finding it. <clears throat> Something 101 in the title. Um, now, where was this at? No, oh, come on. Is this it? No, this isn't even it. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm trying to find it. Um. Anyway, <clears throat> one of these days I'll find it. But the point is, uh, racial, ethnic, and cultural slurs were used at a Middle Eastern man um, to express hatred and violence and it was done on college campus with impunity. And that's my point. All right, this video has been just about an hour long, nearly, um, so I need to end this. Uh, well, I'm going to end it by um, doing what I need to do here. Okay, like here's what the text says. Because I need to know what was offensive, so I learned not to do it again. The main portion of the video in question has been narrowed down to the mention of Valerie Solanus as a spree shooter. All right, now I'm going to submit this to YouTube. And, uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> All right, and, um, so you can see I just submitted this. Um, 
Now, let, I'm going to see if this changes how I get flagged, and I'm going to upload this video. Now, I try to be very, very careful and um, um, very, very careful and uh, in what I said to try to make sure not to offend anybody. Um, and I did not mention the, um, the you know, the, the specific eth ethnic slur. I just simply said that there was one. Uh, in a in a quote by somebody, and um, anyway, um, I'm sure that the fact that I even looked at an Alex Jones um, website will become a source of controversy for some people. Uh, but all I was trying to do is look at the website and see the name of the documentary because that's where. I had first found out that this documentary was being distributed from, and I found this years ago. And um, so that's the last place I remember seeing that. And that's just so, simply so I can get the name of it, so I can go look it up, and, you know, so the audience watching this video can understand what documentary I was referencing. Um, <clears throat> so anyway... Um, yeah, and, um, hold on, one last thing, oh, I don't think, I don't know if this was, um, let's look for videos, let's see if it shows up in here, let's see if anybody uploaded it or whatever. Um, oh, um, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, that's right, yeah, hate speech, oh, that's right, um, yeah, some feminist, um, um, you know, when, when, uh, Warren Farrell was speaking, um, uh, at a, at a, when, when Warren Farrell was invited to speak at a college campus, uh, I believe in, in, uh, Canada, uh, recently, um, feminist, which is primarily women, became violent. And the police had to get involved and break up the crowd. You know, I'm not saying it was a riot, but I'm just saying that it was a... <clears throat> um, it was a uh, event uh, that, that, um, that um, you know, got out of hand and the police had to get involved. And women... I mean, the feminists who were predominantly women. Let's let's look at the facts here. The the feminists were predominantly women, with a few male feminists in attendance. I'm sure, uh, but predominantly and overwhelmingly women. Uh, feminists had, um, you know, uh, gotten hostile um, and kept chanting "No hate speech on campus." Well, Dr. Warren Farrell is not known for hate speech. That's why he was invited there as a guest by the university. Um, see if I did not even spell his name uh, right. Um, yeah, Dr. Warren Farrell is the guy right here, um, and he used to be a feminist. And. Um, uh, and let's see the event. Um, oh. Come on, it was recent stuff. Um, yeah, um, the, uh, yeah, he, he used to be a, a uh, um, well, he's a man, but he was a member of uh, the feminist movement, I believe, for a while. Um, oh! He, uh, 
he was one of the most vocal men championing, uh, he was a male, you know, he was one of the uh, most vocal men who was championing, who was a champion of the cause of second wave feminism, serving on the New York City Board of National Organization of Women. Uh, so he was originally um, very, um, uh, you know, he was very helpful originally toward women. And, um, and he's known for being a very, um, a very um, gentle person, at least from what I've seen him speak and all that. And he, he just, uh, he's, anyway, that's probably why people like him is because of his approach is different than mine. And that's fine because, you know, he makes good points and all that. And uh, I think he's pretty good. Anyway, um, but yeah, he, uh, he was, um, Oh, I need to copy that and get the name. And let's see what results comes up here. Um, you know, um, oh, uh, Ooh, yeah. Let's see what comes up here. Oh, let's see. Um, no, let's just show the, um, let's just show the, uh, YouTube, uh, video Let's uh, let's just start this over again. I had to do a sound check and all that. Um, all right, now now doing a sound check uh, gets on people's nerves and all that, and uh, people get annoyed with that. But it's nothing illegal. It's just checking sound levels and all that. You know, and just making sure the you know audio graph is where it should be. So let's let's watch this video again. And this is what I'm talking about, where feminist. And that's why I think flag my video. Um, and the only other main person who would be motivated to flag a video like that of mine would, would be my ex-girlfriend, you know, not wanting her stuff to be said or whatever, but I doubt she even knows. And all I was simply doing is telling what happened to me, you know, and if that's some kind of crime against humanity, then, you know, maybe we should just, you know, uh, bring all these women who... who say all kind of negative things about men, maybe we should just bring them up on charges, you know? I mean, come on, let's have some real equality. Isn't that what feminists said they wanted? All right, now, um, let, let's, uh, let, and like I said, I, I think <clears throat> at, at this time, December 25th, 2012, I think that it was uh, mainly feminist or feminist sympathizers who flagged my video, and it's simply because I talk about... Um, Valerie Solanas as a spree shooter, and, you know, this video was uploaded after the Sandy Hook uh, elementary uh, spree shooting. Uh, um, you know, this, this video of mine was uploaded <clears throat> on... Um, I believe the, the video was recorded before the elementary school shooting or whatever. Um, I have to look at the date. I think it it was... I think I recorded on the 12th. Yeah, I think I recorded on the 12th of December, but then I didn't get around to uploading it until after because, 
you know, the Sandy Hook shooting happened on December 14th, 2012, basically two days after I um, recorded my video. But I uploaded, I finally got around to uploading my video on uh, December 20th, 2012. And then, um, now I'm going to, um, oh, here's the, uh, here, here's the perpetrator right here, huh? Um, Adam Lanza. Okay. Uh, oh, here it is right here. Here it is. This is what offends me. Right here. Um. They suffered from. They said he suffered suffered from a personality disorder, uh, and was called. It was labeled as being autistic. Well, you know, autism is actually a neurological disorder, not a mental disorder. Um. Oh, he had been at, he had been uh, diagnosed with Asperger syndrome. So maybe that's why recently I've been getting harassed, uh, and it's in some of my previous videos. Um comments where people call me, you know, Asperger, uh, you know, claim, you know, they're trying to discredit me, you know, they're, they're trying to say that I'm going to be some violent shooter or whatever, which I'm not, I have no interest in that, um, whenever I get frustrated, I use words and not violence, uh, because apparently I have some kind of natural gift, uh, for getting on people's nerves, whether I want to or not, um, oh yeah, Oh yeah, they see the, um see that's the thing. Predatory aggression demonstrated in the shooting is generally not seen in the autistic population. Completely true. Uh some people say that autistic people are usually victims of crimes, not assailants. Um now this is the second spree shooting that I'm aware of that was blamed on um autism. Um the other one was Now it wasn't officially stated that um that um uh that Cho was, you know, <clears throat> autistic. But it's being circulated around in the media. Once once again, slandering an entire segment of the population, which is autistic people, uh slandering them and implying that autism causes people to be, you know, mass murderers. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just, yes, we all know that spree shootings are wrong. We all know that violence is wrong. We know that it's harmful and should not happen. Okay. Um, we don't need more bloody shirt waving. And one-upmanship of, you know, trying to, like, score brownie points with the population. We need, to under we need to understand, well, we already do understand that killing is wrong. And all this other kind of stuff. And we should be more compassionate toward people. And this and this and that. And, you know, be more careful as a society to, you know, um, to, um, you know, try to make sure these things don't happen. And, um, but, like, but just brown nosing people, that's just, whatever. Like, um, <clears throat> let's see, um, where did, um, Oh, it's, um, anyway, I remember this, is, oh, here it was, immediately after the, oh, immediately after the incident, reports carried speculation by family members in Korea that Cho was autistic. However, no known record exists of Cho ever being diagnosed with autism, nor could an autism diagnosis be verified with Cho's parents. Uh, the Virginia Tech Review Panel uh, report dis uh, dismissed an autism diagnosis. Uh, experts later doubted the autism claim. But the 
but the point is that I'm bringing up is that autism was mentioned as a possible reason for why he did what he did. Um, just like once again with with um, with uh, well, where's the article about the person? Um, just like the person Adam Lanza was labeled as being autistic with you know asperger syndrome which is a growing you know um a, a growing amount of you know of of the autism um spectrum and all that and yet you know he like it just once again the the autistic community gets slandered again um gets gets slandered um, with allegations of, you know, spree shooter tendencies and all this other kind of stuff. Um, and, um, it's just, so, you know, so uh, apparently it's, it's okay to blame autistic people for stuff. According to, you know, society's response, once again, it shows that there is an injustice, that, that, that society it does not yet have a thoroughly accurate understanding of what prejudice and hatred and injustice and discrimination really is. Oh, but, you know, they want to make sure that, you know, women can be all hypersensitive to everything and all that. Um, yeah. And, um... So anyway, back to this video here, and then I gotta end this one. Um, go ahead and check it out. So what did you just see here? You saw protesters who were chanting no hate speech on campus become violent toward police and other people. Makes you wonder just who the um, victims and assailants really are in this whole big thing. Um, and Dr. Warren Farrell was a guest who was um, um, who was uh, Oh, yeah, this will be a good one right here. Great. Hello, this is Martin Brosman, and I'm representing the proposed White House Council on of Boys and Men. And along with me, we have Warren Farrell and Ian Dwyer. And Ian Dwyer is with the Canadian Association. Basically, I'm Warren Farrell, and part of my background is having been on the board of directors and uh, clearing the doors before we were able to get people inside. This is really important. Warren, would you just uh, take a second to introduce yourself and uh, give a little bit of the background and what you were going to do, uh, uh, present at this event? And Yes, basically, I'm Warren Farrell, and uh, part of my background is having been on the board of directors of the um, National Organization for Women in New York City for, for three years. And then I spoke all around the world on women's issues. And um, and then I began to start seeing in the mid-70s that there were a lot of divorces occurring and that children were really beginning to have a, a failure to launch when they didn't have their fathers involved. And so I began to investigate that and, and saw the importance of father involvement, began to articulate that. And then as I did that, um, a, a number of feminists sort of felt that I, a sort of socialist worker party type feminist militant or Marxist type feminists felt that men already ran the world and therefore having men have equal rights to be involved with their children was not what they uh, felt was wanted. Uh, they felt that the mothers knew best as to what uh, was best for children. And I said, gee, that's mothers know best is as biased as uh, fathers know best. And so that sort of standing up for that part of equality um, got me into trouble with a number of people in the feminist movement, and um, and that trouble was reinforced when I wrote a book called The Myth of Male Power, and The Myth of Male Power began, began to be a, a, a book that explained that power was not about 
um, just scaling ladders and um, and making money uh, that that men had defined power mistakenly from my perspective as feeling obligated to earn money that somebody else spent while they died sooner to a large degree and that real power was about control over their life and then that began to sort of create some um, upsetness at the, on the part of feminists and I was always um, saying that you know institutional power um, success money that was obviously held to a much greater degree um, by men throughout the industries throughout much of the world but the um, personal power the choices that people ideally would have to control their own life that was much more a result of a division of labor where neither men nor women had power both sexes had obligations both sexes had responsibility um, in the in the everyday life of the home and so when I came to the University of um, Toronto campus um, one of my I started first explaining what the boy crisis is looking at um, facts like in education for example um, for the first time in US history and it's very close to this in Canada our sons will have less education than their dads and in the area of like suicide or mental health um, one example of that is that when boys and girls are at age um, 9 and 10 uh, their suicide rate is exactly the same but as boys learn the rules of masculinity um, between the ages of 11 and uh, 14 um, boys have a double the rate of suicide between the ages of 15 and 19 is four times the rate of suicide between the ages of 20 and 24 it goes to between five and six times the rate of suicide and so we have to ask a question is you know are the rules of masculinity um, rules that are serving boys and obviously when a boy commits suicide his sister and his family are deeply uh, tra and tragically um, upset as is most of the school and the community um, we have to look at video addiction and what's happening with our sons why do our sons play video games almost three times um, as many hours per week to the addiction level as our daughters um, and what's happening with jobs why are our boys so inflexible in terms of moving um, from standard male only jobs to jobs that are more likely to be available in the future which are to a much greater degree female jobs we're moving from an era of muscle uh, to where boys were dominant to an area of area of mental where girls and boys are much more even and when girls dominate and women dominate the jobs that are more mentally oriented uh, we have to start asking um, you know what are we doing in our school system to create uh, vocational opportunities for boys that aren't academically oriented and that, and help boys become more able to catch up in terms of reading and writing so when we see the 66 percent of the Canadian uh, dropouts in high school are males and that there's tremendous and the reading scores of boys in, in th throughout every province in Canada with no exception is um, is significantly below uh, girls and the same with the writing scores uh, then we say just for to our with our sons the exact same thing we would say to our father with our with our daughters we say we need to make sure that both our daughters and our sons are simultaneously uh, doing well not just that we have all the magnifying glass on our daughters and no magnifying glass at all um, on our sons well uh, Warren I want to just all right that's a little bit about dr. Warren Farrell and you see how he handles himself whenever he speaks <clears throat> at events or in interviews or whatever and yet he was labeled for being a um, a uh, perpetrator of hate speech uh, by feminist by feminist um, and he used to serve the feminist movement and used to be a colleague with uh, with feminist and you know and I showed you the article uh, how dr. Warren Farrell used to be now um, you know what what job he had as a director um, and all that but uh, of, of the women's movement that sort of thing now he mentioned suicide rates of course that's why I made that video um, this one right here to bring awareness to the fact that men suffer so much um, now there is another video of mine differential bullying where I um, do analysis and commentary 
about the difference between male and female suicide, how it's how men and female or males and females are both regarded in the media, uh, in the public eye, and all that about um, uh, about gender issues, uh, you know, and, and also who actually really suffers from rejection. Uh, you know, in, in this one here, uh, Whitney Crop mentions that, she, you know, because she was not homecoming queen and because she was bullied in that regard, you know, by that prank, um, uh, by that prank vote of being ho homecoming queen, she felt unworthy and all this other stuff because she found out she wasn't as popular as, anyway, um, as she was led on to believe. And she felt devastated and and said that she wanted to commit suicide and all that. Um, and basically because she felt rejection. Uh, she was not validated. Um, you know, it resulted in an existential crisis for her. Uh, basically because of popularity and desirability. Um, now in my video... Um, Oh gosh, what is it? Um, I mentioned, you know, I, I show, I, I basically, you know, recall the tale of, you know, my um, depression and all that and what caused it. And also um, now, and, and this is for educational purposes, I do not want any of this stuff banned or flagged or whatever because it's for educational purposes, really, you know, bringing up a, you know, a serious problem in society. Now, in this video right here, delve into our sources of motivation. Me and the Disposable Human Doing talk about how we have had suicidal thoughts uh, because of how women have treated us. Um, and it had nothing to do with rejection. Actually, it was the double standard and how we were made to feel less of a man, how we were violated to the most profound amount that a man can apparently be valid or uh, 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 violated which is to be a contradiction of himself see it has nothing to do regarding uh, desirability men learn that lesson fairly early on you know uh, they get rejected frequently you know uh, they they keep you know they're expected to just to to get hit and knock down, you know, they, when they, whenever they get hit and knocked down, they're expected to get right back up again and try again. You know, we, we hear all this stuff, you know, of, well, don't give up, or just, you need to find a nice girl, and, and well, I'll just, you know, be persistent and keep asking out more girls, and maybe one of them will say yes, and, you know, it's, you know, if you get knocked off your horse, you're, you're told to get back up again and go back into battle, and that's a metaphor. Um, you know, so, so men, you know, rejection is not really something that affects them as, as hard as what it does women. Because, see, when women are rejected, it, 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 and see, that's the thing, it goes into, matter of fact, one way to really hurt a woman's feelings is honestly to just ignore her and pretend she doesn't exist. Just make her feel invisible. Just don't talk to her. You know, definitely don't flirt. Um, you know, and just keep to yourself. And, you know, and she will feel violated so much. And, but what are you doing wrong? You know, I mean, you know, it's not like you're punching her. It's not like you're raping her. It's not like you're stealing anything from her or whatever. You're just simply not validating her. And then that's why um, they, uh, that's why women, because I know, I, I friend zoned a girl about a year ago uh, who was making advances at me, and she got all mad, you know, and angry as if, you know, it wasn't supposed to happen to her. And, um, and then, of course, she did some of her revenge romance, you know, got back with her ex and and showed him off to me, you know, like, just a little bit of intimidation. It's like, well, look what you could have had. Now he's got me. Meh. And that sort of thing. But no, what actually, um, what actually violates a man at his core is to be a contradiction of himself. Because men have the the, you know, the, the whole protector instinct, you know, protector provider, and they are known for their utility. 
This is also why men are not regarded as victims very often, and when a man is a victim, he's regarded as less of a person, um, because basically he's not fulfilling the expectations put upon him. Um, uh, this also gets into why women actually enjoy objectifying themselves, because a you know an object a um, is worthy of protection. You lock up your valuables. Um, you you know you protect your belongings and all that. It goes into they want to be desired. They want to be uh, they want to be pursued. It it they objectify themselves in a way to satisfy some kind of urge within themselves to feel as if they have existential self-worth. And these are the deep uh, philosophical, behavioral, psychological types of topics that me and the disposable human doing, uh, we take on and analyze. Now, other people do it too. You know, Stardust is good, Barbarossa is good, Man, Woman, Myth is good, so is Girl Writes What? Um... I don't think that cynical cynicism really gets deep into this stuff, and I don't think the the ignored gender. I don't think he really gets into it. Uh, girl writes what you know. She she delves into it some. So does man, woman, myth, uh, Stardust, Barbarossa. They all do good work. Uh, but you know, really getting into the minds of women, you know, men and women, and really understanding what have an understanding of like what affects them and how and it's almost like a like being some kind of a scientist or whatever that's kind of how we see it we we really try to understand the problem because we're trying to understand why you know me and the disposable human doing we tr we've tried so much to to earn the respect and appreciation of women throughout our years and we've done what women say they want us to do, uh, and we've been what women say that they want, but yet they 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 don't want to be with us. Well, that's their choice, okay? And, you know, I suppose they're entitled to that. However, the problem is that they also dispose of us and mistreat us and treat us in ways in which they do not want to be treated, and they do this um, whenever it, it, it can benefit them. Uh, like in this video right here, uh, there was a girl who was flirting with the disposable human doing uh, at a friend's uh, apartment and was rubbing her butt on his groin uh, quite a bit for a while and flirting with him and making basically sexual harassment kind of stuff. Okay, well, he was thinking that, you know, if the girl is doing those kinds of things, it must be that she might be interested in some kind of affection or whatever. Uh, you know, so then uh, he grabbed her butt um, later on while she was uh, laying on his lap to watch a movie, I believe it was, or whatever. And he grabbed her butt, and then she made an allegation later on and got the group, uh, you know, at the friend's uh, apartment, got the group against the disposable human doing, and then it made the the disposable human doing feel so violated to a horrible level, and um, it just, men and women, you know, they have, or males and females, have their their own inherent psychological characteristics, and and things affect them kind of uniquely differently, and uh, and this is shown in the motivations for why they commit suicide, and that's why I put up um, my um, that's why I put up this video here so people have an understanding. Uh, you know, it's a common cliche that that men are uh, you know affected by rejection to the extent that women are, and that men fear rejection. No, men do not fear rejection. Men fear consequence. Um, women generally, you know, are, are not treated the same way as men in many instances, and therefore they don't fear consequences much because, uh, consequences do not apply to them as much, uh, in especially certain areas of behavior. Uh, women are affected by rejection. Uh, they try to make themselves as desirable as possible, and all that, um, 
But anyway, so so you saw the segment about Dr. Warren Farrell and his speaking style and what he was talking about at the University of Toronto or whatever. Um, but um, anyway, um, now you've seen a little clip of how the feminists were treating him. And we're going to watch a little bit more of this since it's only, what, almost a minute and a half long. Let's, let's watch this and let's see how Dr. Warren Farrell, a nice, gentle, soft-spoken um, uh, person who was once embedded in the feminist movement as a pro-women's rights uh, uh, advocate. Now let's see how he's treated by feminists who are predominantly women um, and all that at a speaking event where he was speaking about... Um, um, well, you know, how boys are put at a disadvantage. Okay, uh, so let's check this out now. Now you can see in this segment of the video a feminist uh, who's a woman um, says that the police have one of the campus students on the ground and all that. Well, keep in mind this would not have happened if the feminist had not been uh, basically uh, acting violently uh, toward police and other people um, at this event. Uh, what she tries to do is to derive power um, and to obtain power by playing the role of the victim or having this person play the basically uh, having her group play the role of the victim and that how dare these evil policemen um, tackle somebody to the ground well first of all um, the, uh, the the speaker uh, Dr. Warren Farrell and the police were you know were invited there by the campus and they were just standing there doing what they do. Uh, the police were just standing there. Um, and Dr. Warren Farrell was doing the speaking. And then these, these feminists, well, they didn't, want it, they didn't want that to happen. And they wanted action. And they do what they know how to do, which is basically behave like a terrorist. Uh, because after all, terrorists use violence, don't they? Um, that's part of what defines a terrorist. Um, they will use violence to achieve their goals. And um, anyway, and so they start getting violently, uh, start getting violent, as you've seen in this video. And then um, the police have to break up the violence. They have to end the violence. And the police are just doing their job. And then this feminist claims that the police are being brutal and basically claims that the police are being a problem. Let's continue to watch here. Cops off campus. Hmm. Well, the police need to be in, there on campus to protect people, I mean, right? So, like, in this event, when the police were arresting a violent feminist uh, who disrupted the meeting, 
Then the feminists wanted the police to leave. And uh, at first they said, you know, get off our campus and all that. It sounds like they were saying that based on how many syllables were in the phrase that they were saying. And then they ended by saying cops off campus, chanting that a few times toward the end of the video. And all that. So when the cops don't serve the interest or agenda of the feminist, then the feminists want the cops to not be there. Okay, but then, you know, when whenever masculinity, again, is under question, uh, or when it's under fire, or whenever it's questioned, you know, and there's a potential rapist around, or, or just anything else that, that upsets, um, you know, women, because, honestly, feminists are women, um, and, uh, you know, they, uh, then, then the feminists, they want the police to be around, uh, to, basically, they want the police to serve their interest at the expense of the people who the feminists don't like. Okay, um, I already submitted that, and I need to end this video. Uh, I got to get my day started. And um, once again, I am Manslave, and this is the Validation Warfare Channel. I hope you like the new uh, logo. Uh, it's a uh, male symbol. Uh, with a female symbol, but not just female symbol. It, okay, there's the traditional male symbol, and I drew this myself, except for I got this little part of the female symbol. I got it um, off the web, and I colored it pink, uh, the traditional color of the female gender. And then I placed the female send, uh, symbol in a, in a specific position to where it's grabbing onto the male symbol. But see, the, the female symbol, it's not just female symbol, it's got a fist. And... Um, it's showing, you know, uh, aggression. Um, I, well, this logo is not yet finished. I'm going to have more stuff in it, you know, express it more. But basically it shows the female, you know, uh, displaying aggression toward the male. Um, and all that. And and then, of course, the male symbol is going through the, you know, and all that. And basically it shows what the message is. Validation warfare. It shows that there is a gender conflict. And that's the goal for the logo. And the image is something that I drew myself uh, or made myself. And it better not be uh, reported as something, you know, that violates guidelines or whatever because um, there's a lot of other stuff going out there that is, you know, that, that violates stuff. Um, so, you know, uh, feminists need to not start a war uh, on the Internet, okay? They need to uh, they need to keep the peace, you know, if they're all about peace and equality and prosperity and all this other stuff, which they're not, and they'll prove that they're not, and it's just a matter of time before that happens. All right, once again, I'm Manslave. This is for the Validation Warfare YouTube channel.